Hey everyone, it's Roberto, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing an absolute beginner's tutorial for Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So I'm using the 2014 version of Adobe Premiere Pro CC, but most of this will translate to any version of Adobe Premiere Pro that you might be using, simply because we're going to be doing the most basic things you can do. So let's get started with a new project. So one of the first things we're going to want to do is label our project and we're just going to call this tutorial for beginners. And you don't need to worry about any of these complicated uh, settings when you're just starting out because they're not going to apply to you. So you just hit OK and the program will load up. OK, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to uh, analyze the control panel here. And this is our timeline where we're going to be editing. This is our overall project bin. Uh, over here, we have the effects panel uh, for our different video effects, uh, whether those be video or audio effects. We have transitions like crossfade and so on. And that's where these things are located. Now, you can get a different or general layout by going to the workspace. I'm using the editing layout but there are a lot of different layouts you can do and you can even make custom ones or a new workspace. But to start off, the defaults are usually best. So one of the first things you need to do is you need to import uh, media into your project. You can do that by going down here to the project panel and going uh, right click import or you can go up to file and you can go to import and do it that way. My preferred method, however, is to simply go to my uh, finder and for you guys using Windows, this will be Explorer. And to simply drag my footage into the project panel. And so you can see that that imports it directly and we have our footage. Now, before you can work on the timeline, you notice that the timeline says it has no sequences. We need to add a new sequence to the timeline. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can right click here and we can do new sequence from clip, which is my preferred method. And that will create a video sequence and you see it adds it to the timeline. Now we're going to undo because we can do that some other ways as well. And I'm just going to delete this sequence. So another way we could do this is we could just drag our media onto the timeline and it'll do that as well. And it'll create a new sequence. One of the things you used to have to do is you used to have to um, create a new sequence which you would go to new item down here and you would hit sequence and then you would get this options dialog and you'd have to know what your sequence was going to be and what settings to use for example um i record my stuff on a nikon d3200 as you guys already know and i usually record at 1080p 24 frames per second so i would find my camera settings here under digital dslr and i would create a new sequence that way and that's what I believe um, I did for this video as well. So I'm just going to create a new sequence that way. So now you know the different ways that you can create a new sequence to be able to edit on the timeline. So if we were to drag our footage over here, it picks up the fact that I did the exact settings for my Nikon camera properly with the uh, proper size, resolution, and frames per second. So that's why it does that. Now, if I don't want to edit this entire clip on the timeline, and I just want pieces of it, what I can do is if I double click on this, it'll open up in the source monitor here. So the source monitor is where you create what's called uh, sub clips. So what that is, is you can scrub through your footage and let's say you just want uh, a certain part of it. You just want a couple of uh, seconds of the footage. You can use the input and the output uh, settings here, which is mark in and mark out. So I'll set that this is the beginning of a clip and I can just play it through and let's say that that's what I want. So I can stop there and now that's the part of the sequence that I'm going to create. Now I have a couple options here. I can either drag this directly onto the timeline now and it'll just have the portion of the clip there. I'm dragging this onto video track one and you can see that it has just what I selected from the clip there. So that's definitely one option. But let's say I want to get a bunch of different clips from uh, this footage and I don't want to have to do all of that stuff one at a time. And I can go ahead and I can 
scroll to another part of the video and I can make another sub clip. So we'll just label this 02 clip. And again, creates it in alphabetical order. So now I've got my two clips here and I can drag them onto the timeline and I can arrange them however I want. So now I have both of my clips here and it goes from one clip directly over to the other. So that's one of the basic things you're going to want to do for editing is your ability to create sub clips. So again, this is the basic way you edit. So we uh, let's set the in point and out point for the whole thing, the whole five minutes. And if we drag that over onto the timeline, we have the entire thing from beginning to end. If we wanted to cut just on the timeline and not go through and make our individual sub clips, what we could do is we could go in here and we could pick out our individual areas and we could use the razor tool and we can make our cuts. So let's say I don't want any of that footage. I just sit there and I use the razor tools and it cuts out the parts that I want or at least makes the selection for them. And now that I have this highlighted, I can hit backspace or delete and I can right click and hit ripple delete and now I don't have that footage that was in between there and I transition from one thing to a whole different part. So that's really convenient. And if I want to label areas that I want to make my cuts, I can use markers here, which I can use with shortcut M. And so if I want that transition to be um, different between the clips, I can just go ahead and delete that right where my marker was. And now I know it's going from that to that right away. So another thing you could do is you could go through the timeline, you could make all your markers, and then you could do all your cuts that way. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just get rid of this for now to uh, make things simple. So what if you um, want to just trim your footage and have it end at a certain place? Like let's say I'm good with it ending right here. Well, just for the sake of argument, I could put a marker there just so I know it's exact. And I can just trim using, uh, make sure I have a shortcut V for the selection tool. And I can just trim here. And now that's where the footage will end. Uh, same thing, if I want to end it earlier, if I want it here, I can just do that here with trim. I'll ripple delete the close up the gap. And now I control where my footage begins and ends. And if I want to um, have it start here, no problem. I can do the exact same thing and I can trim it. So you can see that that's uh, pretty clean and pretty smooth. And if I want to edit more precisely, I can use the zoom tool here, shortcut Z, and I can zoom in. The primary tools that you're going to be using when video editing are going to be the selection tool to be able to move things around and to be able to trim. You're going to use the razor tool to be able to make your uh, edits and cuts and you're going to use the zoom tool down here. There are a lot of other tools that you can use in editing, but these are your primary ones just for linear editing. If you're not going to do speed ups or slow downs, this is how you're going to be working. And since this is a beginner's tutorial, that's just what we're going to cover here. I'll do more advanced video editing tutorials that will show you how to use some of the other tools. So one of the last things we're going to cover to wrap up here is we're going to uh, cover uh, transitions. So what I'm going to do is right here in um, this video, uh, actually, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this here. And let's make a new uh, sub clip. All right, let's make a new sub clip and let's start with this and end here. All right, so we've made our new sub clip. Let's drag it onto the timeline. And let's say we want to make a cut here and a transition. So what we can do is now that we've made a cut, we can drag over one of our transitions from the effects panel and we've used dip to black. So what's going to happen is uh, at this point in the video, it's going to dip to black and it's going to fade back in. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is now that I've made my cut, I want that transition to pick up uh, somewhere else. 
So I want it to pick up here. So I'm just going to trim. And this is just a practical example of how you would do this. I'm going to ripple delete. So now I want the transition to be from, you know, the laughing and smiling to the smoking here. So that's an appropriate place to make a transition. So I'm going to use dip to black right here. And then when I push the play button, you can see that transition. Now let's say that I want the transition to be a little longer. I can just click on it here and I can drag it out. So that transition uh, just takes place a little longer and is really smooth and slow. So you see the kind of look that that creates. So again, this is just a very basic uh, tutorial to teach you the main ways that you're going to edit in Adobe Premiere Pro as far as general footage. So now you know a little bit about the layout and the workspace. You know how to make sub clips and you know how to edit on the timeline, how to create a project. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to show you here is uh, how to export your project. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can go to File. and you go to export and you click on media. This is going to present you with a few different options. So the best way that I usually work by far is when I say match sequence settings. And what that's going to do is um, it's going to match everything in terms of your frame rates, your uh, you know overall resolution. It's going to match all those things. But sometimes it doesn't do it exactly the way you want. Uh, for example, in this case, it's picking the MPEG encoding format, which is not what I want. This was done in H.264, so that's what I want. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to use this preset called Match Source High Bitrate. And what that's going to do is that's going to mean that it's going to be in high quality uh, when I upload it to the web, and it's going to be using the same codec as my camera. Um, if you want to you know, know that your stuff is matching, when you look at the summary here, you can look at uh, the fact that it's all 19 by 20. And you can just kind of match up the different settings and you can see that they're the same. And you can see that uh, you know we have match source selected and that all of this is consistent with what our um, you know camera settings are. So that's how you're gonna wanna do that. And your choices are you can export, which is going to do it right here in um, Premiere Pro, or you can go to Q, which will send it to Adobe Media Encoder. I always send it to Adobe Media Encoder because if I want to keep editing and working on other projects in Adobe Premiere Pro, what Adobe Media Encoder does is it renders the video for you in the background. So that's happening and it's using up computing power, but you're able to keep working on other videos while this is happening. So if you have a lot of work to do, this is what I would prefer to do. Um, if you're going to walk away said and forget it, you can just hit export and do it right here in Adobe Premiere Pro. The other thing is you want to go here and you want to change your output name to whatever you want it to be, whatever you want to name this file. So if we were just going to do this as like, you know, example MP4, we would do that and we would just hit Q or export and that's how it would happen. Now there are other presets you can use here. There's ones for different devices if you're gonna do that. There's some for YouTube, um, you know, but again, I prefer to keep this as in high quality as I can. So I don't use those presets. I just kind of go with either the match source high bit rate or I do a custom preset. So that's just my particular approach. You can do whatever you think works, but as a beginner, I would recommend doing either match source high bit rate, or if you know you're specifically going to do it for YouTube and you want to trust the program, go ahead and use the setting for YouTube 1080p HD, and that should work out fine for you as well. There are some additional settings here, but you really don't need to worry about these as much. If you wanted to just import the final output video into your project for whatever reason, you can check this box. Um, that's something I used to do, but I don't really worry about it now. Uh, don't worry about use previews. Uh, again, this is only for stuff that was already generated in Premiere Pro. If you're a beginner. I wouldn't worry about that. Maximum rendering quality is something that you could check out uh, if you want. Personally, um, I usually don't use it because it takes longer and I haven't seen that the quality difference is that significant. So I don't check that. I don't use frame blending because I don't trust it. But again, you can um, do whatever you like where that's concerned if you feel that that's something your video needs. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this um, Adobe Premiere Pro basic editing tutorial. Uh, if you have questions, please leave those in the comment section below. If there's another video you'd like me to produce on Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, definitely let me know that as well. Um, I hope I covered at least some basic things that will help you get started if you feel a little intimidated by the application. I know my other video was a lot more advanced, but that's because it was specific to my video editing on a typical day for YouTube and because people um, requested that video. So I hope this absolute beginner's tutorial is what some of you needed to be able to do um, some very basic editing here. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other Adobe tutorials on the channel. And as always, you guys, thanks for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.